Hey friends, it's Em again, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things sinister. If you're into true crime or if you like all things horror related, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and join me for some morbid conversation. Today's chat is going to be pretty short and sweet, but it's definitely a weird one. Today we're going to be talking about a missing persons case that took about 10 years to solve and it was solved by accident. The circumstances are bizarre and definitely morbid, which should be right up our alley. The story first takes place the day after Thanksgiving. It is November 28, 2009, and 25-year-old Larry Eli Murillo Moncada has gotten into a fight with his parents and he left his home in Council Bluffs, Iowa, despite the fact that there was a snowstorm outside. Larry left his home without shoes. He left his car keys there, his house keys there. He left his car there, and he set out on foot. That was the last time anybody had seen Larry for 10 years. Larry worked at a local supermarket called No Frills that was less than a mile away from his home, and that's actually the place that his body would be found 10 years later. When Larry came home from his Thanksgiving shift the day before, he seemed to be out of sorts. In fact, so much so his mom took him to go to the doctor, and the doctor there prescribed him a prescription for an antidepressant to help with depression and anxiety. However, the medication didn't seem to help. If anything, things got worse. He developed a paranoia. He started to hallucinate. He started to hear voices. He was scared. He felt like his heart was about to beat out of his chest. And he told his mom that if he could just eat some sugar, the voices said that his heart would slow down and stop beating. He thought that somebody was chasing him. And that fear could have been part of the reason why he left his home so abruptly without any preparation right out into a snowstorm. What we are able to piece together a decade after is that Larry went to the supermarket after leaving his parents' home. And apparently he went in unnoticed and was able to get on top of one of the coolers in the refrigerated section of the grocery store. Now, between the cooler and the wall is about an 18-inch gap. And that was where Larry had fallen into and got stuck between the cooler and the wall. The coolers did run loud, and so nobody heard him. It's said that it's likely he could have died from dehydration, which means it wouldn't have been instantly. We do know that his body suffered no trauma, meaning he didn't have a broken neck or anything that would indicate a quick death. But like I said, the coolers were loud, so it obviously nobody heard him if he was calling out for help. The body was so decomposed after 10 years that the only visual that they had that kind of gave an idea that it was Larry is the clothing that the body was dressed in was very similar to the outfit that was described by his parents that he left in that night. It would be a little sometime later that it was actually confirmed by DNA that it was in fact Larry. Now I know what you're thinking. There is a dead body inside of a grocery store rotting away and no one cared to mention anything about it. I mean, me too. That was the first thing that I thought of. I, kn I don't know what a dead body smells like, but I know what like a dead mouse smells like. Or but <laughs> apparently people did notice. And I guess it was just a, a, I guess it was a situation of, I just don't get paid enough to deal with this shit, maybe. No part-time grocery store clerk, I guess, is going to hunt down the smell of a dead and dying body to remedy it. I guess it was kind of like a not my problem kind of thing. Still kind of weird that it just went ignored. Now the store did end up closing in 2016, but by that time he, he went missing at the end of the year in 2009. So they dealt with a dead body in the store for quite some time with nobody noticing. It wasn't until 2019 when the store was getting renovated and remodeled for a different project that they actually pulled the coolers away from the wall and there's Larry. That's when they found him. Now here's the thing that really gets to me. Everything that I have read on this case said that employees would often get up on top of the cooler section. That's where they would store overstock. Um, sometimes cool employees would just get up there to, you know, either mess with the stock or just kind of mess around. And it was not a small gap. I mean, it's an, it's an 18 inch gap. <laughs> so you mean to tell me 
in the years that the store was open, nobody got on top of that cooler and smelled the smell was stronger there and shined a flashlight down in that gap. I mean, it was an 18 inch gap. It's not like a little hole. Nobody peeked over the edge in that entire time and noticed a body there. I mean, I guess just because he was found doesn't mean all of our questions get answers. We don't even really know why he was hallucinating. Sure, some people said that it was the medicine that he was prescribed that caused hallucinations, and, and that could be side effects of medicine, but he was out of sorts before the medicine even came into the picture. Like, he came home from his shift. Was he on drugs? I don't know. I mean, why did he go back to... Well, I have a guess as to why he went back to the store. He probably went back to the store because after he left his house without a jacket and without shoes, he was probably cold and wanted to duck into some place familiar to warm up. And like I said, the store was about less than a mile away. So it was probably the closest thing that he could duck into. But why would he climb up on the coolers? Why would he not just hang out in the store? Why did no... And, and, so my husband and I were actually talking about this the other day, and I don't want to critique anybody who investigates crime for a living because I have a lot of respect for that job. It, it interests me. But I would think if there was a missing person and you had no leads, I feel like I would, I feel like there would be a couple things that would just be an automatic thing to check, like go to the store that he worked and talked to the employees. I mean, he had just worked the day before, talked to the employees there, talked to his friends there. Did, did anybody there, you know, hear that he had plans to run away or, or something? Go talk to the employees, check and see if they have any security camera. What the hell? I mean, really, what the hell? This just so weird. And then it was said that his mom had a feeling, a gut feeling the whole time that he was at the store the whole time. It just seems like a case of nobody's talking to each other. Like the police are looking for this guy. The mom thinks that maybe he might be at the store. The store has a dead body smell. Like if we could get all these people together, if we could just get these people together. Maybe we could have found him a little bit sooner instead of just dealing with the smell of death while we shop for eggs. I'm laughing because it's so bizarre. How does that happen? How does that happen? How does somebody go missing for 10 years? Like, and my husband pointed something out too when we were talking about it. You can have a serial killer that will hide a body 40 miles off the trail in the middle of an abandoned park and the FBI will find the body. Like. This guy's at the store that he worked. And they couldn't find him when he was at the store that he worked at. I feel like it would hurt business if I smelled a dead body every time I went to shop for milk. I feel like it would hurt business if every time I went to grab lunch meat, it smelled like death. I don't feel like that would be good for a grocery store's business, but maybe that's why they closed down in 2016. Anyway, what a weird story. Like I said, this was just going to be a really quick one because it was just so weird. I, I'm i reading about all these bizarre missing persons cases and, and murder cases, and I came across this one, and it was just so weird that I couldn't not talk about it. It was just so weird, but... They found him, and, and, and I love missing persons cases that have a happy ending for the circumstances. Obviously, it would be happier if all missing people were found alive, but at least there's comfort and closure in finding them. And so at least for that, but I don't know. Weird. All right, guys. Well, thanks for chatting with me, and I really appreciate it. Like I said before, if you're into this kind of stuff, hit the like and subscribe button because I am posting new videos all the time. I am researching stuff all the time, and I'm coming across freaking weird stuff all the time. So if you are into morbid conversations, follow me. Let's get into some weird talks. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.